Welcome back everyone to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video. Uh, today I'm going to start a new uh, space agency called uh, Kraken Slay Industries. Uh, in view of the fact that I've been getting a lot of bugs with this game, we've had many a war with the Kraken and also because I have a custom flag now. It's my uh, my merch design also. Hey, buy, buy that from the, the description if you would like to have that on your chest. <laughs> uh, yeah. But speaking of the Kraken, you may recall seeing my Monarch video kind of made the rounds on Reddit and Twitter and stuff because it got a lot of bugs. Oh my gosh, there were so many bugs in that video. It was such a buggy video. Guys, come closer, come closer. This video makes that video look like it was, didn't have bugs. I can't, I couldn't think of it. Now that video, it make, this video makes that video look like it's doused in raid because that's an anti-bug. Oh, that was awful. Um, but I'm just saying, right? <laughs> this was a really buggy video. It took me hours. I was like, okay, I want to build a rover. And since uh, re-entry heating isn't a thing right now in Kerbal Space Room 2, let's do an easy peasy EVE mission. EVE is like the easiest planet to land on because it's got a thick atmosphere. So you can just use parachutes. I don't want to mess around with stages getting all messed up with a complicated sky crane or something to land the rover. So, hey, we'll just set it to EVE and use parachutes and we'll have just have a fun old time on EVE. And I kind of want to see what EVE looks like because I've heard it's quite beautiful now in KSP2. Um, but literally, it took me like four hours. <laughs> it Just getting to low curb in orbit, like the launch sequence, took me, I want to say like two hours because there were just so many bugs that prevented me from launching. We got, we got all of them. We got noodle rockets. We've got the rocket just rapidly disassembling itself. We have balked thrust to weight ratio. We have spinning out of control over and over and over and over again. We have visual glitches. The periapsis and apoapsis randomly just alter without any kind of engine. It was a, it was a mess. This is a video. Uh, so I don't actually know how I'm going to edit this. I'm recording this commentary right now. There's no footage in front of me. I'm just talking like to sub to, to get you guys ready for the video. And then I'm going to pause the commentating in a second and then start trying to cobble the video into some sort of cohesive uh, presentation, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> I'm really I'm really dreading editing this because I don't know how I'm going to make it. There's going to be chapters and stuff, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Hello, it's me again. I um, I mean, for you guys, there was no break, but I just paused my commentary there to go and start editing this video down. So, uh, yeah, we're actually quite well, quite far into the build, aren't we? We've built the rover, uh, and that all worked fine. You know, the rover itself, there were no issues. You might have seen me testing it earlier in this video. All worked fine on Kerbin, it worked fine on Eve, but the rest of the rocket, that was a different story. This rocket... Kraken didn't like it. Kraken did not like this rocket one bit. Um, the first source of Kraken attacks, you can see me trying to build here. It's the fairing. I hate the fairing system in KSV2. I feel like the uh, collision detection of the parts is like way too big. So you need to have a massive gap between the fairing edge and whatever payload you've got. And just, it was just, KSV1, it was fine. Like drawing the fairing by clicking. I don't think there was anything wrong with that. I just feel like now, they're more difficult to build and they take longer to build. And I have a real tough time getting them to close off properly. You might have seen at the top of this rocket, it's like really spiky, that fairing. Because by having it be anything other than a spike shape, it just wouldn't seal the fairing. I don't know if maybe I'm just dumb and I don't know that where the button is that uh, lets you close the fairing off. So if anyone actually knows and says, actually, Matt, you need to press... H on the keyboard or something. I'm like, oh, thank you. So I, I, I always read the comments. Always, I'm learning the game along with you guys. Um, so here we are, uh, finishing off this rocket. Now the thrust rate ratio is not great, but it's higher than one. So we this this what I'm saying is right. This would work fine in KSP one. I actually have way more rocket here than I need, and that's because we can't see what our orbital line is when entering another planet or moon's sphere of influence, so I know my capture around EVE is going to be super inefficient, so I just brought loads and loads of Delta V with me. And uh, yeah, here we are on the launch pad, ready to launch this for the first, but not the only, time. Yeah, not the fastest thing in the world, getting off the launch pad. It's not helped by the low frame rate of the game. I'm going to speed the footage up to four times faster than real-time speed now, just so we can get things moving along. And you can see kind of the, the way in which this rocket continually went wrong. Uh, now, is it just me? Or is, like, the atmosphere super-duper soupy and super-duper draggy in KSP2? I feel like a rocket like this wouldn't need those tail fins in KSP1. But in KSP2 now, all of my rockets have tail fins, because they always flip. There is just so much drag 
in the atmosphere and that's not helped by the fact that the rockets are really bendy uh, and that was usually the reason that for this rocket to flip over is that the top bit bends backwards and the, there we go uh, just flipped over so we can do ahead and revert here we are in the vehicle assembly building just making those tail fins way 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 bigger so help us stay on course let's try that rocket launch one more time and off we go, our second launch attempt. This time I'm going to go straight up. I think going forward I'm going to uh, start my gravity turns a little bit later on than I normally do just to help get us out of the thickest part of the atmosphere as fast as possible because it's the thick lower parts. Uh, that we, that's where all the drag is located, so that's the part of the atmosphere where you're most likely to uh, flip over. So I thought let's just go straight up and then maybe that like two to three kilometers then we start our gravity turn but do a very, very steady and slow gravity turn. Have a look at that fairing. Uh, you can see the top part of the rocket is really, really wobbling around, and uh, yeah, it was making it thing. It was making things very difficult to control, basically, because the rocket was kind of bending against the air resistance. You can see how shaky it is. I think it wasn't really getting along with the gimbal of that mammoth engine. But we are nonetheless making reasonably good progress. We've not actually flipped over or anything. I'm managing to hold the uh, the prograde marker reasonably well. We're going to sort of sit at around this sort of angle of attack now until the first stage runs out of fuel and we can detach it and get on to uh, uh, Lord deploying the second stage. I'm laughing to myself now because this um, this brought me into a whole new circle of hell trying to fly the second stage. Here we go. Let's try. So, yep, yeah, we had, of course, the, the first stage, the fins fall off. Uh, and now we're going to start flying the second stage. As you can see, the camera completely messed up. I'm not sure what happened. It wasn't following the second stage. Although, let's just do a quick load. I quick load now. All Sorry, quick save all the time in anticipation for these bugs that KSV2 has. So I'm like, okay. The camera is still not following the second stage. So I wasn't quite sure. So let's try switching to it in the tracking station. See if that fixed it, but it didn't fix it. And no matter what I did, I tried making a quick... I, what I've done here was I made a quick save after separation, then tried quick loading that to see if that centered the camera, and it didn't. And before anyone asks, I did try pressing the home button on the keyboard. Sometimes if your camera messes up in KSP, uh, KSP2, you press home on the keyboard and that re-centers the camera. But it wasn't. And now I've got this other glitch where the rocket just won't stop spinning out of control. I've had a lot of comments people saying that like, oh yeah, in, in KSP2, you don't need reaction wheels. You need monopropellant. That's the thing. No, this is not that. Because this rocket does handle fine with the reaction wheels. This is a glitch, and I have this a lot now, where rockets will just randomly just start spinning on the spot. The only way you can stop them is to just initiate some like non-physics time warp or quick save, quick load. I can't initiate non-physics time warp because I'm currently in an atmosphere. So the best I could do was try and just raise my apoapsis to a fairly high height so that when I get into space I can kill the spin by initiating time warp and then circularize and it'd be fine. But as you can see, look at what I'm working with here. I can't even see my rocket. The camera will not center on it at all. Uh, oh, the unpaused pause bug is back as well. That's fun. So, uh, yeah, I have no idea what was causing this. It was super frustrating. Literally, I looked at the... I put all my recorded footage on my video editing timeline, and I had a look. And the sum total of time it took me to get... The, so eventually, Doug, as I, do, I did manage it in the end. I was so close to just saying, right... You guys can see the Delta V. You can see this isn't my fault. I'm just going to edit my save file so that this thing is now just in orbit because, of course, there's no cheat menu now. So um, I'm going to just edit this into orbit and we can just assume that the rocket clearly was capable of delivering this payload to space. It was just the Kraken. But I was like, you know what? No. No, we're not going to let the Kraken win. We will slay the Kraken. We will launch this rocket without cheats and without that rigidity hack, I know a lot of people have said, why don't you just do that trick where you go into the save file and just change the joint rigidity of the game? And my goodness, I'm so close to doing that. But I kind of want my videos to be representative of what the game is. Like, I'll install visual mods and stuff, and like I put my custom flag in the game, but I won't do further than that. And um, here we are, by the way, so close, right? So close, yet so very far away. Um, I'm going down to my periapsis now. We're in the atmosphere still, so we've still got a crazy amount of spin that I can't really stop. And and then 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 the rocket blew up. So so it just I tried I don't even know if I'm gonna showcase all my attempts. Let's just scroll out on the timeline. You know what? I think 
I will. I think I will. You guys can skip ahead. It's not that, it's not that much because I've sped the footage up so long, but like for the next, uh, maybe, I think it's like in the next minute, you just see me desperately just trying to somehow salvage this mission. I'm just leaving this all in just so you can see what I had to go through. You can suffer along with me on our epic challenge of trying to launch a small payload to low carbon orbit. I eventually gave up. So maybe if we go back to the quick save I made right before I staged, maybe then it will fix itself. But as you can see, it not only has not fixed itself, but now the visuals are all like everything's like tessellated. Is that the, the best way to describe it? It's all got a bit sort of mosaic-y and ribboned and didn't really matter in the end because once again, the camera was not following my vessel. I couldn't see it. And then it, then it went, then it exploded. So, yeah, I just, I really didn't want to launch from the first stage again because I didn't know, I didn't know the cause of this bug. I was like, is this just going to happen every time I launch a rocket now? So what's, what, what do I do? Like, I just, literally, I don't know. So eventually I gave up. I said, right, en enough of this. We're going to just do everything again from scratch. So I reverted to the launch itself. And um, we're going to just try the entire flight one more time. I'm going to skip ahead to the uh, the point at which this particular launch went wrong. As you can see, very wobbly rocket. And it ended up sort of bending backwards and pulled everything with it. See, by cutting the engine, though, it fixed it. Because it was no longer bending. So the fins straightened it out. But alas, it was too late. And then we ended up in this big flat spin. So that launch ended in a failure. Let's try uh, doing this one more time. So launching. And uh, yeah, all going fine so far. Let's skip ahead to the uh, the termination point of this particular flight. Yeah, once again, just the upper stage is just bending backwards and pulling the whole thing. And then, you know, once we get rid of that stress on it and cut the engine, the fins then straighten us back out. So it's completely 100% due to the fact that the rocket is bending like this. I don't know why we still have bendy rockets. It was like one of the most contentious things about KSP-1. It's such a shame that we not only have them again, but they feel way bendier than they ever did in KSP-1. Maybe I'm looking at KSP-1 through rose-tinted glasses now, but I swear, when I first heard there was going to be a Kerbal Space Program 2, my biggest hope was, hopefully the rockets won't bend. <laughs> hopefully we'll have, like, normal behaving rockets. But, uh, but we still have bendy rockets. Anyway, here we are, ready to separate our second stage. And, oh, we're not following it. And it's once again entered an uncontrolled spin. And that's not due to atmospheric stress, is it? That spin. Like, it, look how quickly it's spinning. I know, obviously, it seems probably faster for you than it was in real life because I've set the footage up to keep the frame rate nice and high. And also because I don't want you guys to have to spend over an hour watching me, uh, you know, an hour experiencing launching something to low carbon orbit like I had to. So, but yeah, it was a very fast... And then now I just can't... It just, it just gets destroyed uh, immediately upon loading any quick saves. So, uh, yeah, I was trying very desperately to give, uh, get this to work, but just the camera was just not... So I tried, like, deploying the fairing, which is now a massive hassle because we have to do it through the parts manager. We can't just right-click it anymore. Um, yeah, so I, I've just... It's really sad watching this footage. I was like, oh, I had so much hope. I remember that point where I remember filming this and thinking, maybe, maybe it'll work. And I was really... I was so close. I was like, you know what? I, people wouldn't mind. I'm sure people wouldn't mind if I did just hack my save file, but I wanted to, we're, we're the Kraken, this is Kraken Slayer Aerospace, guys. Buy the merch. <laughs> um, you know, it's, uh, we, I want to get to orbit. This dev said they were going to slay the Kraken. They only angered it, so now I have to step in and tell the Kraken that no, we shall not be bullied. We shall not bend over for you, not unlike how our rockets bend over. Uh, we shall be prosperous. Guys, this is a call to action. Get your harpoons. We're going kraken slaying. <laughs> As you can see, it's it's really hard for me to, to commentate directly over the footage because I, there's, I can't see. <laughs> I couldn't see the craft. So I was like, right, what if we just restart the game? Let's just re- we're going, we're going restart, we're going back to the start of the game. And we're going to load and see what happens. And it was it just didn't work. <laughs> but the paused, unpaused bug, I think, was fixed temporarily. So there you go. That's how you can fix that. So yeah, camera obviously not great. But the rocket is no longer spinning. So we're pointing progress. So I thought maybe I can just use the nav ball information to get ourselves into space. And then we can switch to the crab. But yeah, you just saw the, the rocket exploded again. So maybe it got out of physics range from where the camera was located. I don't know. So defeated. 
for now, I went back to the vehicle assembly and I was like, right, what about this rocket is causing these issues? Maybe we need more struts. So I added more struts. I also added bigger control surfaces near the bottom as well. Uh, I added a bunch of stuff. I added loads and loads of SAS. I was like, maybe we should have a look. More SAS, more struts, bigger fins. Maybe this will work. I also got rid of the fairings. I'm like, maybe the fairing is like bashing into the payload and causing weird things to happen. So this is the new iteration of the, uh, the simple, quick and easy, I thought, mission to send a rover to EVE. And all oh, that's a... Uh, you can definitely see the wobbliness now we've not got a fairing covering up that upper stage. It's very, very wobble. <laughs> it's a noodly old rocket. Um, it's, quite, it's quite fun, I think, to watch. And it's fun for me now because the mission ended up working. I haven't actually clickbaited you guys. This mission will succeed. It will succeed, but for now, this is like <laughs> just a... I'm just watching the, uh, the, the wobbliness. Why did they think this would be a good idea to have this level of joint rigidity? Uh, yeah, and there goes, there's the flip there. Uh, but once again, once we cut the engine, uh, the bend goes away, and then the rocket just fixes itself. So I designed an aerodynamically sound rocket here. Um, oh yeah, and also the UI is bugged. <laughs> the, uh, the fairing build tool is there. That's going to be in the video for a little while. I, I will get rid of that. Eventually I just alt f forward and rebooted the game and that got rid of that, but yeah. Another little quirky bug, and oof, this rocket was just so, look at that, bending over backwards. I'm just going to cut it there, because this this rocket, unsurprisingly, did not make it into orbit. So here we are in the VAB. I first of all got rid of all the extra SAS wheels I added, and instead started to just strut this thing to high heaven. Struts everywhere, more struts, struts everywhere, struts are love, struts are life, guys, in KSP2. You just want to strut everything uh, you want to go crazy. Once you think you've added too many struts, you're about 50% of the way there. So I added loads and loads of struts, especially connecting the rover to the upper stage to hopefully try and get rid of that bend. That was what was causing, I think, a lot of the issues. I don't know what was happening with the camera bug. I was still terrible. Like, imagine putting us put yourself where I am right now. And again, I couldn't close the fairing without having a massive point. But at this point, I just didn't care. I also was sick of launching this thing at such a low speed because the frame rate was bad and the thrust rate ratio wasn't good. So we got, there we are. We got more boosters. We got more struts. I forgot to check my staging. The fairing, for some reason, was in the first stage. I had to go back and fix that. But here we are on the launch pad, and I can tell you guys right now, this will be the final launch. This is the one that gets us to EVE. Mwah. Soak up that sound design. For all of the bugs and the crack and attacks, the sound design in this game is top-notch. I do like just enjoy sitting there listening to the sounds of those rocket engines. Uh, and here we are. Yeah, it's still... It's still bendy, but I don't think it's as bad, but I'm not sure. I mean, when I watch the preview of the video in my editing software, the frame rate is not, uh, you know, a 60 FPS frame rate like it is for you guys. It's like choppy because it's like, pff, like not rendered yet. That's how video editing works. So uh, I can't quite tell how bendy it is. I can always, it's always much clearer, the bending once the video is rendered and all that. But yeah, we got separation of the SRBs, all nice and safe. This thing really was a little bit, yeah, it was a bit wobbly, wasn't it? I was going for a very, very vertical gravity term. <laughs> I, I, said, oh, I just need to get out of the soup. I just want to get out of the thick part of the atmosphere so that when we deploy that second stage, uh, the air is nice and thin. There's going to be very, very minimal drag to send us off into a spin, and it should be easy. So now we've got a horrifically overbuilt rocket. I mean, the rocket was always going to be overbuilt because I wanted to have as much spare Delta V as possible for our EVE capture because the EVE capture was going to be very, very inefficient. So um, it was always a bit overbuilt, but yeah, now it's just very, very overbuilt. Uh, but hey, look at this. You know, we're, we're, near, we're getting to space. We're making really good progress. Now comes the moment of truth. We're going to stage. And at this point, I, like, prayed. I was like, please don't let the camera work happen because I don't know what causes it. I don't know how to fix it. But as you can see, oh, the camera is working. <laughs> the game is behaving like it was supposed to. But in my euphoria... I forgot how to play Kerbal Space Program. I was thinking like, oh, I've not reached my apoapsis yet, so I'm going to point downwards to really help raise my periapsis. But as you can see, uh, using the numbers underneath the nav ball, I actually passed my apoapsis, and now I'm on a descent. And I hadn't realized this yet. I, I deployed the fairings, and they just sort of disappeared. So I thought, right, let's fire the nuclear engines and just time warp to our apoapsis. And I was like, oh, 
we weren't time warping to our apsis. We were time warping to our periapsis. So the, everything. So I had to do a quick load, and then upon quick loading, uh, I was greeted by this um, rocket. Looks like it could use some glue, right? It looks like it's made of paper now. But then I deployed the fairings in theory. There we go, uh, and then everything was fine again. So that bug, I think, must happen with the fairings. Like maybe the fairings are made of all those little segments. So when they stage. In theory, they explode in that sort of pattern. Then that breakage pattern just gets placed across the whole rocket. I've no idea. I'm no programmer. But maybe that's what's happening. I'm not sure. Anyway, at this point, I just quit the game and then reloaded to try and get rid of that fairing build UI, which is still plaguing the visuals now that we're in space and I haven't got to worry about continually launching to low curb in orbit again. And uh, yes, it's fixed. So now, guys, the mission, there's going to be no more problems. It's all going to be plain sailing from here. Sailing is an apt word to use because that's sailors encountered the Kraken. And we will, unfortunately, still have some Kraken encounters. But we got through the most egregious part of the mission. I'm, I'll be, I'm, I'm pleased to let you know for your sake and my sanity's sake. It was at this point I realized I'd forgotten to launch at an EVE phase angle, but no matter, we can uh, go to tracking station. Time warp is still disabled, so I quickly launched the flea onto the runway, switched to that so that we have more time warp options available to us. And then uh, I just had started time warping to an EVE transfer window. Now, an EVE transfer window is when if you draw a line from Kerbin to the sun to EVE, EVE should be behind Kerbin, as you can kind of see it orienting itself here, at an angle of 50. So the angle that that line forms at the sun should be about 55 degrees. I just eyeballed it. I know a lot of people have complained, and this is a valid complaint for what it's worth, but a lot of people complain saying, oh, transfer windows are no longer in KSP2 when they were in KSP1, and now we have to eyeball encounters rather than being able to plan them. To be honest, guys, I've never not eyeballed it. To be honest, uh, I, I always just eyeball it. It's fine, don't worry. And Eve is dead easy because Eve has got a gigantic gravity well as well. Uh, so it's really not too hard to eyeball it in Eve's case. Things like Elu, Drez, a bit more tricky. Moho, in my opinion, hot take time. Moho the such, it has such low gravity that the transfer window is pretty irrelevant. I just don't bother because the amount of benefit you get from burning with the Oberth effect is minimal. So I just uh, treat Moho like I would treat a space station or Kerbal that I'm trying to rendezvous with in an orbit. I just basically put myself on an orbit that intersects Moho's orbital line, just go there, and then just create a move node and drag on retrograde until I get an encounter fairly easily. A bit of a, bit, you know, obviously the trip takes longer for your Kerbals. I don't care. I've got a time warp. But yeah, that's that's just how I get to Moho. So uh, you don't really need transfer windows. Now, all that being said, it is more efficient technically to use a transfer window. So Bradley Wissons, if you're watching this video, pretend I didn't say any of that. But for you guys, uh, just add a couple hundred more Delta V to your ship and then you don't need to bother with a Moho transfer window. Anyway, you do need to bother with an EVE transfer window. So that's why I've burned that a transfer window to EVE. Now we're going to perform our mid-course correction burn. Because much like Minmus, EVE is at a tilted orbit relative to Kerbin. So I'm just setting up a, a mid-course correction burn to change our inclination so we can get an EVE encounter. What kind of EVE encounter do we get? Don't know, because the map screen still doesn't show your orbital path past a planet or moon that's not that's in a different sphere of influence, which is always, because it's a different planet or moon. So I had no idea what my path past Eve was going to be. So we're just going to have to accept we're going to have a really inefficient capture. I'll probably be capturing in high Eve orbit, which is not where you want to do your capture burn, ideally. You want to be kind of close to the planet to maximize use of the Oberth effect. But I couldn't, and I didn't really want to have to sit there just randomly quick saving and quick loading until I kind of lucked my way through it. So that's why I've got so much Delta V on this craft. You know, because technically I could at this point just get myself on an EVE collision course from interplanetary space. Because there's no re-entry heating that we have to worry about. So we could just literally just go for a, just slam straight into EVE. Which is what I'll be doing later on in this video. Uh, but alas, I couldn't. So I needed to have, you know, 1500 meters per second of delta V to perform our circularization and try and aim ourselves somewhere other than Eve's oceans, which was a task and a half. Uh, but, but we'll get to that later on. First of all, here we are just getting our approaching Eve. Here we are. What sort of encounter do we have? A horrible one! Yay! So we have to do a circularization. And then do this. Look how look how expensive this burn's gonna be. But whatever, we've got the fuel budget for it. So let's uh, just time warp over to that maneuver node. Sorry, maneuver plan. I'm still trying to correct my lingo there and and execute basically. 
So uh, there's Eve, by the way. <laughs> so we can we can see it. It's definitely uh, I'm liking it from a distance. It's looking it's looking very nice. I mean, stock Eve in KSP one definitely leaves a lot to be desired because it's meant to be the uh, equivalent of Venus, but it's got no cloud, so you can just see the surface, which, as it turns out can be advantageous. Uh, yeah, here, this is a bug, by the way. I can't cut the throttle when I'm time warping, even when it's physics time warp, so the craft can still burn its engines without have to drop down to one time warp. I can't uh, stop the throttle when the game is paused, which I think must be a bug. But yeah, Eve's clouds. Um, it sort of turned landing on Eve into RNG. Because there's no way for you to see the surface. There's no way that I can see that I can find to see what biome you're over when you're in orbit above Eve. So there's literally no way of being able to tell if you're going to land on the land or in the ocean. And most of my attempts, I landed in the ocean. So I'm going to show a little montage of me attempting to land this rover and it just kept splashing down rather than landing on land. So that was super frustrating because the whole descent process takes ages. Like, it was about five minutes for each attempt. So it was incredibly frustrating not knowing if my landing attempt was going to work because I couldn't see below the clouds. And it takes ages to descend below the cloud layer and have a look at what's underneath you. Super annoying. Actually, whilst I'm watching that back, I'm going to not show you all of my attempts because what I ended up doing, because it took so long, was I just switched between uh, altitude above the ground, altitude above sea level. And if the two numbers were the same, I knew I was above the water. So that was how I just ended up being able to quickly check. But it was still a very janky solution. So we're fast forwarding now to the final entry attempt. So yeah, a uh, future suggestion for, for an update to KSP2. I know there's there's quite a few things that probably need to be higher up the priority list, but maybe have some sort of toggle atmosphere, at least in like the tracking station. Because I mean, we can see the surface of Venus, right? NASA's got X-ray photos, not not X-ray photos, um, radar-based photos. They're like simulated views, I think, based on radar scans. Anyway, something like this. This is a video game. Just make up some technology. I don't know. <laughs> Call it the Lown View. There you go. There, there, there. there. I, that's you have that for free if you want. But hopefully the Kerbals can figure this out. So we haven't got to just basically. RNG our way down to the surface because it'd be nice to be able to choose where we land like it'd be nice ideally to land this rover maybe along the coast so I can drive along the coastline you can see the water versus the land but the sheer just randomness and luck based aspect of picking a landing site I didn't have the energy to just to do that so I just aimed for a a kind of a, a polar region, which is far more landmass than the equatorial region. So that's just an easy way of finding a landing site on Eve. It still did take a little while. It took a few attempts to uh, find, to re-enter somewhere which wasn't above water. But as you can see, we found a nice sort of mountainous region to test out the uh, the motors of this rover. Uh, but first of all, we need to actually perform the touchdown itself. So here we are, getting close to the ground. I'm going to drop us down to real-time speed and we can watch this happen in real time. Yeah, wasn't the uh, wasn't the smoothest of landings. I I tried in vain. I detached the uh, the parachute module, see if I could sort of run. we could kind of. I was like, oh, just a little bit more reaction, real talk, where we can get this thing to roll down the hill and flip itself up, but did didn't work. Luckily, I had made a quick save just before I deployed the parachutes. Mind, I found that if you quick save with parachutes deployed and then quick load, the parachutes will be completely gone basically like they'll have they'll be open but there'll be no shoot so yeah you have to repack them which you can't really do in the middle of eve descent so uh, yeah back up to sped up footage now this time i was so bored i was like i'm just gonna time warp till the very last moment to deploy this parachute so we can just get on with the landings here we are once again slowing down to real time speeds to watch this thing touch down a bit 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 stuttery there but we still managed to touch down in one piece so my advice would be if you're landing a rover have the brakes enabled uh, enable the brakes and uh, hopefully that will be less likely to induce a, a random flip then i tried driving the rover but as you can see we're just rolling down the hill turns out despite the fact i've got eight of these wheels they're really not very powerful the motes inside them are rubbish basically so this thing really, really struggles to go up hills. So, oh, the brakes are very good though. As you can see, that took out one of our solar panels. Uh, I'm just trying to get the uh, the parachute module to fall off, which uh, took some doing. 
There we are. Oh, took out another parachute. Um, took out took out another solar panel. I do beg your pardon. But as you can see, we've still got one solar panel left. I then realised I'd accidentally attached two communication dishes rather than one. I hadn't disabled symmetry. That was an oops on my part. And uh, yeah, back to the solar panels. Didn't really matter that we lost two out of our three panels because ultimately this thing has loads of RTGs inside the chassis. So that's going to be how we get power, basically. The solar panels were more for the aesthetics more than anything else. Although I don't think I'm going to use solar panels in Cold Space Room 2, at least not initially, because of that annoying... You might have seen it throughout this video. That annoying pop-up that every single time the solar panels are occluded, be it your rocket is just rotated, or you've gone behind the dark side of a planet or moon so you can't see the sun, the game goes, ping, notification, your solar panels can't see the sun. I'm like, I know, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Um, can we disable that? Maybe we can, I don't know. I, I haven't really investigated it, but that's going to be something to do on my list of things to do. Although, to be honest, I just can't be bothered. I think I'm just going to use RTGs for, this for the foreseeable future. I do love the Kerbals in KSP2, though. Look how cute the animation is. I mean, it's covered up by the uh, site name at the moment. But hey, I just love the little like, flag deployment. And hey, the frame rate's not too bad, is it? I know my live stream went to the surface of Midmus and I was getting like 15 FPS. But here, it's running at a pretty, fl play pretty playable frame rate. I'm going to fade across to all the Kerbals on EVA here. Maybe a potential thumbnail shot right there. Don't know yet. Don't know what the thumbnail is going to be for this video. Maybe it's that shot there. You guys obviously know the answer to this. So I'm I'm curious. Can you let me know? In the, let me know in the comments. What was the thumbnail of this video? Oh, uh, the brakes to say <laughs> the brake toggle went off when a Kerbal boarded the rover, which was fun. Uh, I've just crossed. Oh no, actually no. I was going to say let's crossfade the Kerbal to the point where the Kerbals are on board. But to be honest, I don't know. I quite like showing it. And also, I really love like we talked about earlier about the sound design being great in this game. You know, have a little listen. Am I going to switch to that last Kerbal? There you go. Have a little listen to this. Oh, they make little footstep sounds on the ladder. And I think eventually they'll make footstep sounds on the, the ground as well. Because they do on Kerbin. So I think they're just going to continually add more sounds to the planets as they continue to work on the game. Anyway, I'm going to speed the footage up to three times faster than normal speed so you guys can get a good view of this rover traveling a nice long distance. And I think it makes it easier to appreciate things like the suspension of the rover. I think that looks pretty good. Like the suspension is like reacting to the surface. We're going at a fair old pace. We're not sliding out of control. I think I disabled friction control for the front most wheels. That usually fixes the whole ice skate problem in Kerbal Space Program. It doesn't fix it completely, but it does seem to make it less likely to happen. Like, it's not happening to me here. It didn't happen to me at all, in fact, during this drive, which is great. Uh, here you can see, though, that, um, oh no, and it wasn't really steering for me very well. And then I realized there is an auto-adjust steering option you can toggle, and now the front wheels steer, but they steer, they, steer, they steer quite aggressively, so use that option with caution. Now it's just really struggling. I'm going to speed up the footage even more now, just because it really was not able to get up this hill, which is not good, in my opinion. Like, it's not a very heavy rover, right? Uh, we're supposed to be able to make mining trucks and stuff eventually. And the wheels, they just really, really, the motors inside them couldn't get them up this hill. Which I don't think is a particularly steep hill, right? I'd say this looks fairly reasonable. So I definitely think the motors need some beefing up in Kerbal Space Program 2. Now I don't know if there's a setting, like I tried changing the traction settings to see if that made a difference. I'm not sure if it really did. But either way, I think they need to be a bit more grippy and the motors need to be able to get up hills steeper than this. Yeah, as you can see, we are now sliding backwards. I thought, okay, let's not bother going up this hill. Let's go, uh, let's go this way. Slow the footage down to uh, real-time speed now so you can see how well that went. In my hubris... The Kraken claimed the rover. I can load a quick save. So I still count this as a successful slay of the Kraken. But uh, I think that's going to be uh, how this mission is going to have to end, unfortunately. I hope you guys enjoyed the ride, though, and could laugh at my pain at the very least. And uh, thank you to all the names on screen, my Patreon and my channel members who help make all of this content possible. If you want to see your name there and occasionally get videos a little bit earlier, you can sign up using the links in the description. And then there are two videos on screen 
for my channel, you should be sure like, hopefully they're good picks. I think one of them statistically is going to be a KSP2 video, but maybe it's a Planet Coaster video, eh? My best series that no one watched. Anyway, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I already said that, so uh, thanks for watching, and goodbye. Remember to leave a like. I forgot to 